Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to the Underground. So when it comes to the world of intelligence analysis and statistics and spies and espionage and all the cool stuff like that, as we all know, there is a lot of nerdy stuff that goes on behind the scenes that really doesn't get shown the light of day. And among that nerdy stuff, one of the things that you'd be hard pressed to find as a harder to explain topic is the idea of Bayesian analysis. So I thought that by covering a topic that is exceptionally hard to, to grasp, we can really see that it's not that hard to understand and it's quite helpful in very specific situations. So what is Bayes analysis? Well, Bayes analysis is really any kind of analysis that is using Bayes theorem or Bayes equation, if you want to call it that, which is a way in statistics of determining the likelihood of something based on follow-on information. So again, let's not get super wrapped around the axle when it comes to the mathematics of this. So in the real world, Bayes equation allows us to have an initial hypothesis of probability. Like, say we say that there's a 10% chance of something happening. Well, we can have that assessment right up front, but if we get new information, how does that assessment change? That's really all that this is. It seems like it's more complicated than that, but that's all this does. It allows us to change our initial assessment based on new information. So again, forgive me if some of the words are not correct in this, but the reason that we have to kind of simplify this a little bit is because of this. This is Bayes' theorem. Looks pretty scary, doesn't it? So. Uh, this idea is kind of hard to explain, but I promise you, as scary as this equation looks, it is very, very simple. Uh, it's almost too simple. So let's bring up our main graphic here and let's work through Bayes' theorem. First of all, we have to start with a hypothesis, right? So for the purposes of example today, let's hypothesize that there is a 10% chance that China will invade Taiwan within this year, okay? Let's start with that hypothesis. I'm not saying that's an accurate hypothesis, but we've got to start from somewhere. And I thought that by using a more real world example, this might actually help us out quite a bit. So let's start with the hypothesis. Let's just say that, you know, I'm an intelligence analyst and my job is to figure out, you know, what's the chance? My boss asked me, you know, hey, what do you think about China invading Taiwan this year? Are they finally going to do it this year? Well, I can say, well, I think there's probably a 10% chance of that happening this year. So let's go ahead and put that on our, our little chart here just to help kind of show this visually. Let's say that the yellow block represents my assessment, which is 10% yes, 90% no. And just to simplify this even further, let's say that we can think of this in terms of uh, invasion yes or invasion no, right? And if you want, just to help you kind of break things out a little bit more mentally, you can draw an imaginary line uh, kind of dividing up these ideas because we're going to be picking apart the yes side of this uh, little chart here and we're going to also be breaking apart the no side. So again, just saying 10% chance of Taiwan being invaded, 90% chance that's not gonna happen, okay? Now imagine for a moment that your boss comes in, uh, he comes into your office and says, hey, look at this new Intel report. We got all of these Chinese aircraft all, all up and down the Taiwan Strait. We've got all these major indicators of an imminent invasion. Well, you can sit back in your chair and say, all right, um, well, that's cool, um, but my assessment doesn't really change that much. And your boss may ask you, well, why is that? Doesn't it look like we're getting ready to be, you know, involved in a major conflict here? Well, you can sit back and say, no, and here's why. So bringing our chart up here, let's look at the yes side of the equation. Let's say that we're correct, right? Let's say that uh, there's a 10% chance of China invading Taiwan. And based on this new information, we have to ask ourselves, if China were to invade Taiwan, what is the percentage chance that we would see this behavior, right? The increased air aviation activity. Well, just me thinking, I would assign a pretty high value to that because that's why my boss is in my office, right? He's trying to say, hey, look, this is a major indicator of a conflict happening. So if China was going to invade Taiwan, if an invasion was yes, then we would see this behavior maybe 
80% of the time. Can't really ever be sure, right? China may want to do a sneak attack or something like that. So let's just fill this in on our chart here in green, and let's call this the likelihood. Now, for those of you who think, oh my gosh, this is still, this is confusing. Here is the next part, which really is the entire crux of the whole thing. And that is, let's move over to the no side of the chart. And we have to ask ourselves, all right, how many times, or what's the chance, let's just say, what's the chance of us seeing this activity, this increased you know, aircraft activity, what's the chance of us seeing that even if China is not planning to invade, right? So if China is not planning to invade at all, what's the chance we're going to see this aviation activity anyway, right? No matter what. So on this chart here, Let's go ahead and break that out. So I'm going to say, just as my own assessment, that even if China is not planning to invade, let's say they're not planning to invade, well, 40% of the time, we're going to see this aviation activity anyway, because, again, aviation activity is something that China is going to be doing pretty much all the time, just to, one, collect intelligence, but also, two, to keep Taiwan on their toes. So we're going to see this aviation activity kind of a lot, right? Maybe not more than half, but let's just say for the sake of argument, we're going to see China conducting aviation activity 40% of the time. If China has no aspirations of conducting an invasion, if invasion is no, then still, we're still going to see 40% of the time China conducting aviation activity, which the inverse of that means that their chance that they're not going to do anything at all, and they're not going to invade is a 60%, 60 right? I know that these percentages are probably the wrong way to explain this, but it all comes together right now. So now that we've plugged in our variables here and we've kind of assessed, you know, what the chances are of things happening, let's bring back in our chart, our uh, equation, our terminology, and let's put all of this together and match everything up so that we're all good to go on how this works. So starting with the color yellow, if we look back, uh, that was our initial assessment, right? We're going to call that the prior. This is what we started with, that 10% chance, right? There's a 10% chance that Taiwan is going to be invaded by China this year. So we have to remember that magic number. And in this case, it's 10%. Uh, we're going to convert that to a decimal, so 0.1. Now we have our variable introduced, whatever that is, it doesn't really matter. But we need to think, all right, what is the likelihood that we would see this variable occurring if the answer is yes? So in this case, we're going to say that, well, if China was going to invade Taiwan, there's an 80% chance that we're going to see aviation activity. So that's where we get that 80% from. So we're going to express that as the color green. Again, we're going to convert that to a decimal. Now moving over to the other side, the no side of the equation, because this is where it all kind of comes together. If you just do the yes side of the equation, the yes side of our little example here, you're going to probably over assess uh, the chances of this happening. So, and remember, our, our prior means that there's a 90% chance of no invasion happening. If China is not planning to invade at all, what's the chance that they would have increased aviation activity? And I'm going to say they're going to do it 40% of the time, right? They're going to be doing increased aviation activity 40% of the time, even if there's no invasion. Well, that conversely means that that 60% has to go somewhere. So 60% of the time that there is no invasion, there's going to also be no aviation activity. Again, we're going to convert those two percentages to decimals, and we're going to plug it into our equation here. From here, it's just basic math. And if we reduce all of these down, we actually get an answer of roughly 0.25. Now, what does this number mean? This is our answer. This means that we initially assessed that there is a 10% chance that China will invade Taiwan. Well, when we add in this new variable, this now means that there is a 25% chance 
that China will invade Taiwan. Now, if you had looked at this from the very beginning and not gone through this crazy math stuff, you probably would have said, oh, it's, it's a lot higher than that, which is why your boss is standing in your office. Your boss is standing in your office saying, good grief, man, there's, there's aircraft in the skies right now. And you can say, well, yeah, but still considering all the factors, the math is not adding up. And yeah, it's much more likely, you know, 25% chance is higher than a 10% chance, but it's not a 95% chance, is it? So really, this is all the, what the Bayes equation is for. It is for really conducting a sanity check to make sure that you're not overreacting to data as it comes in. You don't want to get a new variable in and then just go whole hog on it and change your whole assessment based off of one new variable. That's all this is. So, right, there's nothing more to it than that. And this kind of, once you kind of do this a few times, like pick an example and work through uh, the, the way that I have this equation laid out for you. You may have to take some screenshots or take some notes or whatever, but work through this a couple of times with your own like examples. And you will see that really this is not that complicated and it makes an awful lot of sense. And this is where some of the criticisms of the whole Bayesian analysis uh, thing can come in because it sounds really intense, right? It sounds really like high level statistics, um, you know, and, and it may be uh, if you get way deep into it, but when it comes to like the social sciences or, you know, intelligence analysis, really when the rubber meets the road, it doesn't provide that much value. Uh, it does help. And really you don't necessarily have to go through this equation to kind of figure out some of the disadvantages. The first disadvantage is that this whole system relies on your initial assessment being decently correct. Uh, you really have to have somewhere to work from, and if your initial assessment is really off base, then you're going to find that the statistical analysis really is just kind of reinforcing a wrong idea. So you may find that you know, you have a 10% chance of something happening. Well, now it jumps up to like 95% chance of happening. And you may say, well, this is, this is really off base. What did this new data do to change my equation so much? Well, it didn't really. It's just that you're wrong <laughs> right to start with. Another disadvantage to this is that it kind of, you know, really relies on your assessment of that second variable. And if that analysis is wrong, then you know, you're going to be pretty inaccurate a lot of the time. A third problem with this is that it oversimplifies what is sometimes a very complicated set of variables. For instance, um, there are ways of computing more than one variable, uh, but really in the real world, you're only, going to be, you're only going to be dealing with the one. So you could just be doing all this mathematical effort really for something that's just kind of common sense. And that kind of lies with one of the final disadvantages is that, and this is where a lot of the critics of uh, Bayesian analysis kind of come in, is that this really isn't that useful for like social sciences or um, things where we already have to kind of guess the probability anyway. So you'll find a lot of times that people tend to, you know, lean on Bayesian uh, analytics really just as a way of making themselves sound smarter than they really are because all of this can be boiled down to one really simple idea. And that is that if I have evidence that supports my idea and that evidence also doesn't support my idea, then that evidence doesn't really mean anything. You know, that's kind of the Bayesian thinking in a nutshell is you have to realize, all right, does this evidence support my idea or does it not? Or does it do both? Does it both prove and disprove my data. If when we add in that evidence, that variable to our line of thinking, and it doesn't change either way, if you're right or if you're wrong, then that evidence didn't really do anything. It, if you think about it, it kind of makes sense. You know, going back to our example, well, you know, we think that, you know, China may invade Taiwan, 10% chance. All right. But even when they're not planning to invade, they still do this variable 40% of the time. So that really kind of shows that, yeah, they're, you know, seeing this activity is going to be an indicator of an invasion, but how strong of an indicator? Well, 
25 percent that's what it turns out to be using our, our example so I know this is kind of complicated to think about, but this may help you uh, perform kind of like a sanity check a lot of the time if you're trying to figure out, well, I've got this new information here. How does this really affect my assessment at the end of the day? How does this really change my line of thinking? And does this change my hypothesis? Any? Uh, sometimes it may go up, it may go down, uh, depending on you know what you think is likely to happen. So. Again, very complicated topic. We may talk about this more in the future, but this is just kind of getting us started by understanding what Bayesian analytics is and how we can use this to affect our assessments. So thank you all for watching. Give it a try and see if it works out for you, and we will see you next time. And as always, fight in the shade.